Well, hello, hello. Um, today is, we're doing something really interesting today. Um, my name is Ho Yin, I'm the founder of Remo, and today we are experimenting with a really new format um, that we've never done on Remo. Um, it's sort of like a podcast recording, but also like a video um, webinar, and we've never done this at Remo, and uh, I am super crazy excited to have our very first recording with uh, a very special guest of mine, um, Ailish Wasserman. Um, today we will be talking about introversion and remote work. And um, before we kind of go deep into that, um, I would love to welcome Ailish Wasserman. Ailish, uh, Harry, how how's it going? How are you doing? Good, good. Thank you, Hoyan. I am so excited to join you um, and I, you know, connected to you through a Remo event and loved it. And so I'm just glad to be here. Um, and as excited as you as an introvert, I might not be outwardly as excited as you, but we're going to talk about that today and what introversion really means. Perfect. Yeah. So today the topic is um, introversion and we're going to talk a little bit about what does introversion mean? Um, a little bit about what are some of the expectations from a cultural standpoint, what are misconceptions, um, how does remote work fit in with someone who has an introverted uh, personality, and some other you know, interesting things about it. So before we begin, um, Ailish, could you please just give us a really quick introduction about yourself? Sure, absolutely. So um, I am a higher education professional. Specifically, I'm a career coach. Um, and right now I work for the University of Michigan um, with the uh, engineering college there. And then I also work as a freelance career coach for the Muse. Um, so my mission is really focused on cultivating confidence and inspiring self-discovery. Um, and so my niche within really my career coaching is introvert career development. Um, and so that's where I see myself um, growing and helping you out there um, as a fellow introvert to really understand how can you be your best self and articulate your strengths as an introvert. Excellent, great, okay. So let's kick this off. Um, so we wanted to discuss a little bit about some of the labels, some of the words that we are going to be talking about today. And, um, you know, we're not trying to, um, when, we, when Ailish and I first talked about this, you know, we're not trying to overgeneralize or really kind of talk about things um, in a general way in or to kind of make people feel um, labeled or mislabeled or uncomfortable, but we do need to kind of define some of the labels that we have that we'll be using today. But we, we, we do recognize that really it's an actual spectrum. You know, the labels are just uh, a word to describe one aspect of people um, and not the entire aspect. So for the sake of discussion, we will be simplifying, um, we'll be simplifying some of that. So Ailish, do you think you, you think it's a good idea and what terms do you think we should clarify that we will be discussing today? Right, so um, I'm glad you brought that up because it's always good to realize that this is a safe space that we're, we're talking in um, and we want to be respectful of others' experiences, opinions, um, because what we're talking about right now is the introvert extrovert spectrum and that is a temperament a personality preference um, and that is something that you know is going to vary um, you know based on who you are and um, it's interesting because in a lot of um, places it's it's assumed or thought that introverts are actually um, only about like one third of the general population in the world. Like they're about 33% and extroverts are the rest of that. But actually, um, if you look at the most recent valid research um, from the MBTI, which is the Myers-Briggs, and you can look that up as well, that is where we get a lot of our research about this spectrum. Um, it's actually 50%. Um, and so we just have to keep that in mind that, um, you know, as an introvert or an ex as an extrovert, 
um, you are going to experience these things differently. And so we are going to generalize things a little bit just because we're talking about, we're focusing on introverts, um, but it's experienced differently for everyone. So even for me, um, my story is going to differ from you. And um, Ho Yin, you're an extrovert, correct? I mean, I would, I would say I, I settle between okay. extrovert and introvert. Um, I, I wouldn't say I'm, I'm a particularly very extroverted person, but I would say that I, okay. I, I do okay in social situations, but okay. yeah. Yeah. And so, and there's a new term that's come out also called ambivert, right? Mm. So there's kind of those three extrovert, introvert, ambivert. And so if you feel like you're kind of sitting in the middle, um, then that might be you. Um, and depending on certain situations, you might feel like you're, you, um, you know, are adjusting on that spectrum throughout your life. Um, but this is something that's in your DNA, it's ingrained in you. Um, and there is neurochemical science behind these differences of who you are. Um, okay. Yeah, th th this is great. I think, um, so, okay, so let's, so let's talk about what is the meaning, or what would, what would typically people define as introversion? Sure, introversion. absolutely. Um, and so to start off talking about this, I definitely want to point our listeners to Susan Cain um, and the Quiet Revolution, because this movement of understanding introversion um, is actually fairly recent. Um, there's always been individuals interested in this, but just in the last decade, Susan Cain has written a book named The Quiet. Um, if you haven't read it, I would definitely recommend it. Um, and she really explains the foundation of introversion, um, what it means to be introversion, uh, introverted. And so she really describes it in two different ways based on stimulation and energy. So those are the two things that we need to kind of keep in mind that introverts like quieter, more low key environments um, and ex you know, extroverts like more engaging, stimulating environments. Um, and so that's one thing. And then really energy is introverts focus are more drawn inward with their energy and extroverts are focused more on outward energy. So drawn to the world of action. Um, now that doesn't mean of course, um, that one type is, you know, much more social than the other. Obviously, extroverts seem much more social, um, but we're going to talk about that um, in just a little bit. But it's really a temperament, again, related to your personality type based on your energy. So when you say, like, energy, do you mean, like, they are people who use up a lot of energy when – talking with people or they prefer low energy spaces like what do you mean by that yeah so it's it's really helpful to think about like a battery right so recharging your battery um we all have a limit to how much interaction and how, how much we can be stimulated in a particular day in a particular setting and so uh, you know introverts tend to get overstimulated um, much quicker and so they, they do like quiet and alone time because that allows them to process more. Um, and really even kind of, you know, getting into um, the, the science of it, um, extroverts tend to get more dof dopamine, like more of a reward um, in, their, um, in their mind when they're in more stimulating environments, whereas introverts don't. Um, so that kind of relates back to the whole it, energy of having to recharge your battery and, and introverts can do really well in, in these types of situations, but they have to remember to be careful and just recharge their battery. But aren't introverts also like, when we're going into a little bit of like misconceptions here, but um, you know, it, it, are there any relationships with introverts and they don't seem to want social interaction? So it's not even about Char charging or recharging is they tend to stay away from like it makes them anxious for some people like what yeah no that? yeah so that's um and we can definitely you know kind of move into talking about this too um so there there is a correlation between anxiousness 
and introversion. Um, but it's important to be clear that they are entirely two different things. So um, anxiousness or even kind of social anxiety, kind of getting into that realm, um, is, is definitely something that um, a lot of introverts might experience, but extroverts can also experience that. Um, and so it, a, social, a myth really that a lot of people think is that introverts, that introversion is having social anxiety and it's not. And so that, that's something that's always really important to clarify. Um, however, introverts do, do not prefer to be around as many people or prefer those one-on-one -on -one discussions. And so that can cause anxiousness in them more so. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah I do. I do understand. Okay, okay, cool. So what I find really interesting is like, you know, that um, there's there's definitely a, an expectation when when you're socializing. I mean, so I mean, socializing in, it, in its word itself is a really human behavior. Like we 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 socialize very differently from any other animal on this planet, and. So it's like a very key part of like the human experience and human and human beings in general. Um, but there seems to be more of like a cultural maybe expectation, or do you think there's a cultural expectation, um, especially in the United States, about this type of extroverted uh, mentality, uh, expectation to speak and talk, you know, voice your opinion? Um, is, is there a cultural expectation? Yes, I mean, absolutely. And I think this is one of the reasons, the why of, you know, we're talking about this today. Um, and it, actually going back to Susan Cain's book, she describes this very well as really, um, when you think about society right now in, you know, especially in the U.S. and Western culture, we live in a culture of personality. That's the way she describes it versus character. And so, you know, personality being all the things that you just described, Ho Yin, um, extroverted qualities that are reflected in everyday life um, that, that surface in the classroom and how we participate in meetings, um, in TV and media, thinking about, think about sitcoms that you watch, um, you know, from with a Western view. And um, do you see a lot of introverts in those sitcoms? Maybe, maybe not, but um, you know, that just really charisma that you see is so, is really um, so common in media today. Mm. Um, and so again, that culture of character that, that um, Susan Cain talks about, um, that was more related back to before the industrial revolution. The industrial Re revolution in the US is kind of what changed this manner of our work style and us needing to really go out and be diligent and um, almost kind of you know sell ourselves um, in in society as 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 our work styles have changed. Um, and so yeah, I think that um, there's there's a lot of ways that we have this um, really grain, in, ingrained way. As, as extroverts that we act. And the perfect, really a perfect example of that, especially as a career coach, is interviewing. Um, interviewing is, in, in my mind, a very much um, an extroverted type of practice that is really in contrast to the introvert personality um, because of trying to process right on the spot being here, like open right now and just talking um, that can be very difficult because one quality as an introvert, of course, is that we really like to process through things and think through things um, in much more in depth. Yeah, that's a, that's a really good point. Um, I, I definitely do feel uh, that in the United States, when I first came over to the United States, um, so I, I was born in the United States and then I moved back to Hong Kong and then I, I came back to the United States for uh, for college, but I always, so I kind of bounce back and forth, but bouncing back from Hong Kong culture and then to American culture, I always, it's, it's always such a cultural adjustment that I always have to make because like when you're in 
when you enter an elevator or you know, even as simple as holding the door, there's actually a lot of human interaction in American culture. When you enter an elevator with some strangers, you know, people will talk about, hey, how are you? They'll smile, they'll, they'll, they'll hey, how's the weather today? Or wow, it's really crazy traffic out there. And there's, there's a lot of moments where you're, you have, I have to kind of act more extroverted. I have to act like I'm interested. I have to, well, not act, but I am interested in talking to people, but th there's, right. there's a lot more effort that has to be put in. And what's interesting is in Hong Kong and Asian culture, that doesn't exist. When I'm in an elevator, we just, we just go, oh, okay. You know, it's, and think about Japanese culture, right? Japanese culture is the opposite. You know, it, we, we don't want to have conversations with strangers because we feel like we might be impeding into their personal space. Like we're, we're try, we, we think it's, Japanese people think it's considerate not to suddenly talk to someone or make them right. feel uncomfortable or put them in that position. And, and I would say, aside from the United States, almost in every country I've been outside the United States, like this type of like, casual kind of small talk is really not expected. It's really not expected. I mean, something as simple as like um, hugging, for example. Um, right. Hugging is also like a very Western culture, like kissing on the cheek, which in Europe they do. Um, in Asia, it's like, don't touch me. Like I'm- Personal you know, space. <laughs> like I'm, you know, we don't even do that with family, you know? Yeah. Like we don't even do that with family. Um, and it's definitely westernized, more westernized Asians will pick that up and will adopt that. But most people, you know, just don't really adopt that. So it's, it's I, I think this sort of expected extroversion, I, I mean, I sometimes will feel this because sometimes when you're like in this, like, like you're in an elevator and you, and I'm okay. Like I could carry a conversation if I wanted to and with them. But there's sometimes these small moments, these flashes of like awkwardness where like, we just don't know what to say. You don't know what to say. You, you know, you feel you want to kind of shrivel in, like not shrivel into your ball, but you want to like kind of go like this. Like there's a tightening. There's a, there's this feeling of, um, I don't want to interact because I want to avoid this awkwardness or I want to avoid, this is kind of anxiousness, I guess, is kind of what you were saying. Um, mm -hmm. now over time, as I got older, I, I've been able to, you know, overcome those moments of actionsness. Like I don't have that as much anymore. And if I do feel it, I can always like feel my way around it. I can always like just overcome it, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, and in general, like, I don't really care as much. Like, like if it's, you know, if it wasn't a good conversation, it wasn't a good conversation, I don't care. But I, I, I really kind of fully really, uh, resonate with your concept of this expect expected extroversion because when i come back to hong kong it's like there is no interaction there's nothing yeah no and, and, and you know yeah a lot of this is, is cultural i mean it's it's fascinating to see differences in, in society and and how that affects us and and you know and being from another culture and visiting um an, another city and just seeing that you know come into play um you know it I, I think that what you know, kind of what you're describing being in the elevator is just that that small talk um, challenge because a lot in the U, a lot of culture in the U.S. is just chit chat and small talk. That's right. Right, especially in in networking and sometimes small talk or chit chat at a bar or you know in just an informal social situation can make you make a difference in how you move forward in your career. Right. Um, and, and so that that's challenging. And, and, you know, one one way I like to, to kind of describe this, too, um, is sometimes for introverts is kind of fake it till you make it. Right. Um, smile and nod. Um, and, you know, it's not that, you know, we as introverts, we want to be inauthentic. Um, but I, I like to describe it as being a chameleon that um, often as introverts in, in, in a very extrovert society, say in US culture, um, we, I think that often we do blend into our environments and we're, we're able to adapt um, because in a way, if you think about your, you know, your entire being and, and the, the different um, ways that you express yourself, it's in, being an introvert is a minority category. 
right? And so you have to push yourself to be, come out of your, your comfort zone. You know, what I would also say is that like in Japan, right, the expectation, I would say, in terms of culture is to, they have a very heavy emphasis on etiquette and like how you should behave um, and the conversations and being very polite and all that kind of stuff. So it's almost like the opposite of, of U.S. culture. It's like introversion is more expected. You, you, you shouldn't be loud. Like you can't talk and do all that stuff. So I think it's very interesting in Japan is like expected to be introverted. And if you talk too much, you, you become considered like a loud person and very inappropriate. inappropriate. So I, I, I would say, you know, I think there's a lot of different um, cultures out there and, um, and, 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 you know, and for example, like some people, some Japanese, my Japanese friends, they don't like that strict hierarchy and strict control of introversion without the ability to speak out and, and kind of make your voice heard, which is kind of like the opposite of, of the United States. And the United States is all about independence, you know, um, voice your opinion, you know, like right, it's expected right. for you in class to put your hand up and say like, oh, I feel blah, 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 blah. But in, in, in other, in, in Japan, it's like, and in China, especially, it's not, you know, it's not, a, your own opinion does not override the opinion of the group, for example. And so those things are like penalized. So mm -hmm. I think it's very interesting, um, different cultural expectations, even how they perceive introverts and extroverts, I think is also extremely different. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and I know that, you know, too, um, Hoyan, we've been talking about misconceptions, um, a little bit um and i you know can definitely talk about that but i'm curious kind of um we've we've talked about one misconception being um you know kind of social anxiety and anxiousness but what are common misconceptions that you've seen people have about introversion yeah that's a really good question like i, f I feel like a lot of people just feel introverts just um stay at home all day and play video games um they just read a book do themselves and just stick with themselves like for example in hong kong we have a term for introverts um and it's it's there's it's a term for a female and a male and that term um is basically describes them as someone who just stays at home and plays like on their mobile phone all day um and like maybe plays video games and just doesn't just doesn't want to interact with people mm -hmm. um and and even in hong kong what's interesting now that we talk about this we will sometimes use this term to describe someone um like neutral or maybe sometimes even negatively like they're like a nerd like a nerd yeah. at home and sometimes that might be sometimes actually it's sometimes used in a negative way. So um, I, I think that that is one of the, I think that's one of the things that I've seen. Is yeah, so with like kind of that term is used in a negative way, um, you know, because we just had this discussion about, you know, how introversion in ways is more expected in, in that culture, but are there negative terms then about extroverted individuals as well? or negative perceptions? I think, I think there's no term that I know of for someone who is overly or, oh, oh yes, there is. There are terms for people who are extroverted and they call like they are like way too social, like a social butterfly, but used in a way where like, wow, they're just kind of all over the place kind of thing. And they go mm -hmm. out too much, they're too social. Okay. Or um, like in Asian culture, like we have this area where a lot of um, people go to drink and hang out. It's like a bar area. And there's, there's, there's some conservative, you know, people that don't, that don't like going there. Like it's a bad, like it's a bad place um, or it's just not a very good place. And they will describe those people that go there um, in an also slightly like negative, negative way because of, the, because of what's involved in the activities they do and like the drinking, they're going out and stuff like that. Okay. So, so I think it, it's, it goes both ways a little bit. It, it, go, it goes both ways. You see it more going one way or the other. Like you see more people talking about kind of this. Nerd. I, 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 that would be hard for me to say. 
I, that would okay. be hard for me to say. I mean, yeah, I, I don't know that. I think it's probably about the same, maybe. Okay, okay. No, I'm just, you know, I'm curious, because I mean, you know, I think um, from my perspective, one of the reasons I love talking about introversion too is because it is seen in ways so negatively um, in U.S. society. If, you know, if I, if I were to talk with a room of people and use, have them self-identify as introverted or extroverted, many introverts will not identify because they actually think that they will not raise their hand because they think intro, introvert, being an introvert is a negative quality. Mm. Right. Um, and it, you know, I think it's, it's that um, part of this, all this whole misconception and really um, provides another term that I like to talk about an issue is um, something called an imposter syndrome. Are you familiar with that? I, I, I do, but let's, uh, but please just kind of explain it. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's just, it's, it's really kind of a feeling of being misunderstood, but an imposter syndrome is really as an individual thinking that you are not good enough or worthy of where you are or what you're doing. So mm -hmm. that if I'm in this role, cl clearly I'm, I must be a fraud or I'm going to be found out. Right. And so introverts, because of, often interacting, you know, in my experience in this extrovert society and not matching up to their extroverted peers feel this imposter syndrome. I see. I see. Okay. Yeah. So. I mean, and, and I think like one of the other impressions that I get with introversion aside from that, with that, which that's interesting is introverts um, tend to like not want to talk to people. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That is that is definitely. Um, I think when I have talked with um, introverted audiences um, and facilitated, um, two of the biggest myths that are really challenging to introverts is that introverts hate people and introverts are seen as rude, right? Um, and that, and I mean that can be hurtful because if if someone um, is just quiet or they're not as participating as, not, as, as much as they should or expected to, then they might be seen as rude. And so um, there's, there's definitely a balance there because I think that um, introverts do learn um, how to be, you know, more expressive and um, show more personality, but often introverts they're processing information. Um, and they also, a lot of times, not given the chance to speak um, because there's so much going on and it's so fast paced. Um, cool, okay. So aside from mine, do you, do you see there are any other common misconceptions you've seen people have about introversion? Yeah, I mean, there's there's a ton out there. Um, I think a couple others that I would mention is, you know, um, one in Vegas, introverts are poor leaders. Um, but there are so many wonderful examples of introverted leaders, um, you know, from Gandhi to Abraham Lincoln to Bill Gates to just, you know, historical and famous leaders um, who, you know, really... As, as introverts, they have been able to show society the power of their mind and the power of um, just, you know, deep reflective thinking, I think. And that's, that's when, it, you know, we've been talking about a lot of negative things, but there's a lot of strengths to being an introvert as well. And, and focusing on that um, introverts are really deep reflective thinkers and processors and inventors who, you know, if we didn't have solitude in the past to think about these things, where would we be today, right? Um, and, and that's, I mean, that, that, that is difficult in, in the workplace today because, um, you know, work in, in many societies has gotten so fast paced that taking time to pause and reflect um, and have those quieter environments um has has been really challenging and and even really um the open office um arrangement that has been very popular in culture and i was curious if you know you have that arrangement um 
um, over in, in Asia because that has become very popular here today in the US, but most introverts I know do not like this open office culture where they can't focus. So in Asia, it's more of like a mix, like Western, more Western companies here um, will obviously take on that. Like they'll take on that it's okay, it's open office. In Asian culture, it's like a mix. Like you get these offices, which are open office, but then you also get some that have these, these like cubicles, like low cubicles. Um, but the offices are much smaller here. So they're not as big as in the United States, like in terms of each cubicle. So I, I, I don't know. Like, I don't know if, if where that lands on in between um, the, like whether it's like an open, because I feel like sometimes because they're so small and everyone's so close together that it, it kind of works against, um, you know, it, it almost seems like an open office. Um, okay, cool. Now we're start talking about office. This is a great um, uh, segue. So remote working is starting to become really hot. Um, and the fact that you're talking about like reflection and the whole concept of deep work and remote work seem to really tie in together. Um, mm -hmm. And so, I would love to like maybe just talk about um, what positions that you think or work environment that introverts prefer to work in that are beneficial and pleasing to work in. Right, right. And I think, yeah, I think we were just touching on this. I mean, um, you know, introverts really prefer positions often that allow them to operate, you know, um, autonomously and um, independently where they can reflect and again be deep thinkers um, there there needs to be time where they can you know really focus in on um, on their current work you know whether that be in a, on a computer um, whether that be when they're writing um, and that that really is a, a quiet environment with with solitude um, and you know i think that there's always questions out there are there different industries or types of work that are more pleasing to introverts and i think that you there's definitely some correlations there um i i think that they're stereotypical like oh like a lot of engineers must be introverted right which is not necessarily true although you, you might find you know a lot of quiet types um in engineering um so I think that on the opposite side, sales, right? You think, wow, can a, an introvert be a salesperson? Um, in fact, they can. Um, it's not, I think introverts aren't naturally drawn to, to roles where they really have to put themselves out there and have constant customer interaction. But I have heard from some um, introverts in sales that they actually excel really well at, well at it, even maybe better than some of their counterparts because introverts are very strong and authentic listeners and empathetic mm -hmm. listeners. And so they really hear and listen for what the customer is needing and saying. And so really, um, I don't think there, again, is a particular industry or area there's some areas where introverts or extroverts might flourish more but that's an important clarification to make i think it's a good point i think sales is a lot about listening for sure and i i totally 100 percent agree with that. that that's a really great example okay so with respect to remote work um you know is is remote work maybe if you could just answer uh in a maybe a short sentence or few sentences like do you think remote work is a good uh, match for introverts and what do you think are the major benefits right absolutely um so i think rem remote work definitely is um a good match for for introverts um but it, it's it's a match for both extroverts and introverts it just depends on if this environment is you know suitable to you based on um you know who you are as an individual so i just want to clarify that too because you could be an introvert but based on other characteristics of your personality and your goals and your um, aspirations um remote work may or may not be a, a good fit for you but right now um i think you know the sky is the limit when it comes to remote work and as an introvert i'm really enjoying um now being an entirely 
um, remote worker. And so as far as benefits, um, you know, there, there are a ton. I think that the initial one, obviously, what we've been talking about is just less, um, you know, distractions and social interactions that might, you know, re really reduce your anxiousness and your stress. Um, because you do have that focused workspace of your own that you can call your own. Um, and I think that, you know, you have other ways that you can communicate um, that are more intentional to your liking because maybe someone in an in-person um, workplace is going to come by your door and try to talk with you, but you prefer to talk them talk with them through different channels. Um, so with that, and I just think that, you know, planning ahead and processing and having more purposeful connections are really strong when it comes to remote work. I also think that if for remote work, um, it's very more agenda driven, like everything has to be planned much more better and everything has to be communicated intentionally much more better. There's a lot less, um, I mean, there is a lot less chit chat. There's a lot less water cooler. There's a lot less kind of casual hangouts. So a lot of those awkward conversations or awkward moments are removed. And right. the, small talk. <laughs> the small talk is kind of removed. So like, I think that's also like one thing. And then the other thing is like, um, every, every single meeting or every single thing has to be very intentional. Like if I want to, um, hang out, let's say, or have a happy hour, it's like, here is the moment of happy hour. Here is a time where we are all now expected to do a social activity. Whereas when you work together, it's like a mix. Sometimes you're socializing, sometimes you're working. Sometimes, and that, I think that's normal. Like that's normable for normal people, but maybe, I don't know, maybe Ailish, you can, you can, maybe you can help me with this. Maybe by kind of siloing each of them, do you think that actually helps? So that they're kind of, because engineers like to have their activities siloed. Like I'm developing now because I have to go into deep work and think through things. But then the moment that someone says, hey, I need help, I need some help, like their thought just goes all the way up and they have to spend so much time to go back down deep again. I was just wondering, and I'm just saying engineers have this issue. Um, mm -hmm. And I'm just wondering if maybe introverts have something similar to that. No, no, I, I mean, I absolutely agree. Um, I mean, I think this just goes to a larger conversation of, of the benefits of productivity in a remote work environment. And introverts can be one of the most, you know, beneficial, um, you know, individuals because there's, there's so much research out there that um, productivity goes through the roof in remote work environments because of all those, what we were just talking about, um, distractions and, you know, not being able to stay in task and be focused because I don't know about you, but there's that myth out there about multitasking. Can mm. one truly fully multitask? Um, and, I, and I really don't think that one can put their mind in too many different places and, and really do a focused job on something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 I agree. I definitely agree. Yeah. <laughs> I, I can't multitask. Like, I'm not a multitasker. But on the other hand, like, I do know some people that can, but then you know, I, I don't know whether that multitasking is really beneficial or not. Like, as you said, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah um, absolutely. Okay. Okay. So, so do you think like, are there any other benefits or should we talk about some of the challenges? Yeah, we can definitely talk some about some of the challenges. And I, and I think that, um, you know, some of the challenges relate to um, what we've been talking about here too, is just, you know, networking. So what, what do you think is one of the biggest challenges of, of, of remote working in respect to networking? Like can you maybe share a little bit of, a bit about that. What do you, in terms of is you as a remote, maybe you should talk a little bit about um, you as a remote worker, like how long you've been working remotely. What are the challenges that you face? Sure. Sure. Absolutely. Um, and so, and, and I'll be, you know, completely transparent and honest, like, you know, um, you know, what, what we're, we're doing right now and talking, this is fun. We're having casual conversations. Um, but, but sometimes it just kind of, you know, being on the spot and, um, kind of being on, on video 
and um, trying to, to process things in front of another person, um, it can be challenging um, because introverts, you know, they appear, they appear or kind of tend to do their best thinking in, in, an, in anticipation rather than on the spot. Um, and so I'm, you know, I definitely in doing podcasts and doing things like this, I, I do put myself out of my comfort zone and, and I enjoy it and I learn from it. Um, so, you know, I think, I think that's definitely one thing. Um, and then I, I do consider myself a social introvert. You know, I have been completely working remotely now for about, um, six months. And before I've been entirely in an office, I have done, I have done a lot of like remote work type of interactions, um, online with individuals all over the world. But now there's definitely that challenge actually for for introverts is coming down to also just being too isolated or too disconnected um and i feel that because as an introvert sometimes it it really takes an extra effort for me to kind of reach out and you know intentionally get connected whereas sometimes it's easier for extroverts to do that naturally. And so I have heard from other introverts as well that you really have to be intentional about reaching out or really thinking about your office environment and how they interact with remote workers, how they incorporate you, whether you know, you're in a remote team, a co-located team or a distributed team. Mm, interesting. So what, so, so we met at a, um, an event at a virtual event that Remo hosted. Um, mm -hmm. and so how did you learn about that event? Why did you decide to attend that event? Yeah, well, um, I'm a remote work advocate. So I, um, I think that there's, there's so many benefits, um, to, to connecting remotely. Like, the two of us, like we, you know, we met each other recently. Um, and that was because I was able to attend this event and how I found out about, um, this event on Rima was through LinkedIn. Um, because I'm always connecting through LinkedIn, which is a, is a great, I think, um, platform for anyone, especially introverts to connect one-on-one -on -one with others and to, to start, um, you know, messaging and connecting. And so um, I, I follow a lot of key terms on um, LinkedIn and follow a lot of interesting people. And so, yeah, that's why I found out about it. And when you wanted to go to the event, what was like your purpose of going to the event? Yeah, I, my purpose was just to to get to know a little bit more, obviously, about the topic of, of understanding remote work um, in our larger society. But I was just really interested in your platform um, mm -hmm. because, um, you know, I think that virtual networking is fascinating and the way that um, you have it set up. So it's, I'm actually in this virtual environment where I can just talk to other people um, across the world and just instantly connect with them, I think was is really cool. And I think for introverts in particular, um, connecting over a topic or an area of passion could be really interesting. Um, be, you know, because there's something kind of funny that I like to talk about when it comes to introverts, but um, there's a saying that you're introverted but willing to discuss blank, meaning what's an area of, you know, passion or purpose that you want to talk. Um, there's actually online, there's a guy that's wearing a shirt that says introverted, but willing to discuss plants. Okay. Mm. <laughs> so, you know, for me, maybe I love Abraham Lincoln. So introverted, but willing to discuss Abraham Lincoln, right. Or willing to discuss career development. So I think if there's, some sort of like intentionality and talk topics behind what I see. And that's what I saw in the remote platform that I'm, you know, comfortable in versus just going into an environment and not being sure, like, who do I talk to or how do I do that? Cool. Okay. That's great. Yeah. I mean, uh, I remember the, the topic that we talked about. Um, it was about positive 
environmental impact, right, on re with remote work. I think that was that was a great um, that was a great discussion. And um, yeah, I met like a tons of people there, having like separate conversations on each table with different people. I thought it was great. Yeah, absolutely. That's really cool. Good. And what? So on the topic of like connecting and socializing, like we talked about, like virtual network, like virtual networking, Remo as a platform for, for, for online virtual networking is one way. And we've talked about uh, LinkedIn as well. Do you, do you have any other ways that you think are good ways for introverts that work remotely, that allow them to connect with others socially? Is it, what, what other ways are there? Yeah, I mean, well, there's, the sky's the limit, um, Hoi, and I think there's a lot of different ways um, and platforms to connect, which there's, that's why there's, there's such cool technology like Remo, which everyone should totally check, check your platform <laughs> out. Um, uh, Slack is, is, a, is a great example of, um, you know, just these workplaces, these communication channels. Um, and I've really enjoyed using that in, you know, a few different capacities, um, both, you know, for work and just kind of socially, um, because I think that, um, these conversations that we have, maybe they're, they are focused more on work, but they can be more focused just on, again, like social connection, um, areas of interest or passion. Um, so sometimes, you know, there's Slack. I know people use, um, platforms like Microsoft Teams. There's obviously, what's the platform that we're on right now? Zoom. Mm -hmm. Um, so there, there's lots of um video platforms but i'd be curious to, to kind of know your experience of technology out there too because i'm always kind of exploring um and learning what's out there yeah i mean i think there's there's like i think what, what's happening right now is there's a lot of um specific niches and they're all as you said niches like a specific topic where people kind of crowd around so you know reddit and like these big platforms like linkedin which are more of these mass platforms where you've got all different types of topics on there and it's just one massive platform. A lot of people are saying that people are going to be breaking up these platforms and going to smaller individual platforms for specific topics. So for example, there is a um, forum software called mighty networks, which some, maybe you or some other people might've heard, which is basically a forum and it's a software that people can host forums and topics um, for a specific topic for a specific niche. And they kind of gather together and talk and chat, post on topics. It's just basically a forum. And I think, okay. and, I, and, I, and people are creating their own little tribes or their own little kind of places to hang out with people that are interested in the same topic. So that, I think there are a lot, a lot of ways. Um, even like Discord, um, people use, as you said, Slack. Um, even like, it, it almost, the tool almost doesn't really matter so much. Like people will use different tools as a medium to communicate. Um, I think it's more of like how you find them. And Reddit, I think, is a really good starting point. There's almost every single topic that you can think of. And then, then in Reddit, people will chat, maybe use Discord or some other thing to kind of enhance that, 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 that quality of communication from text to more voice and then maybe from voice to more video. Right. No, no, absolutely. I mean, I think that's, that's a great way to look at it. And I mean, even I didn't mention, mention Facebook, but um, I find for a lot of millennials, which I'm a millennial, um, that there are a lot of like focused topic groups that be, can be very participatory and collaborative. Speaking of that, like groups about introverts. So definitely look um, that if you're on Facebook, look into that. Um, but yeah, Reddit. I always go back to LinkedIn though, um, as well, because I think from kind of a you know professional standpoint, um, if you put any term into LinkedIn's search bar, you can find so many, so much content out there. But there's always people and organizations connected to that content, and so if you just follow that trail back, you can find people. And I've I've gone on there and found, you know, I've typed in introverts career development, whatever. And I found people, you know, across the world or the nation that are doing these topics. And the great thing about LinkedIn is it's expected that you can connect to people who you completely don't know. And I think I run into a lot of people, especially introverts that think, 
Um, you know, why would I connect with a stranger or somebody that I don't know? Um, but I think we need to remember that, you know, with uh, this pay it for pay it forward culture that we have and just understanding what it means to connect and network professionally, you should connect to people based on these mutual interests and passions. That's, that's fantastic. Okay, cool. So let's, uh, before we close out, um, just wanted to talk a little bit about like your experience with virtual networking. Like, what do you think are the benefits and challenges? Like after, after attending an event, um, by the way, we have like a, a lot of events this coming week um, mm -hmm. and this coming month in November. So um, I'll put in the show notes, like the link to the upcoming calendar. Um, okay. So, so, um, and, oh, and Ailish, there, there, a lot of it is really, we, we have a good portion of events that are based around like female entrepreneurs and female, um, business and, and a lot of woman centric stuff. So I think you might be interested in attending them. So what do you think are the benefits and challenges of, of virtual networking with Remo? Just to kind of give people like a, an idea of what it's like. Yeah. Benefit, um, benefits and challenges to just kind of attending remote work events. Yeah, yeah, like virtual networking, remote, remote virtual events, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that, um, you know, definitely one of the, the main benefits that kind of is clear to me is that you just get to meet so many people from so many different backgrounds and um, perspectives, and then you're able to connect with them further, like one-on-one. -on -one. Right. I mean, that's how, that's how you and I met, right? <laughs> that's right. Um, and so yeah. I, I really appreciate that um, because you just get a cross section of so many people um, that I don't know that I would kind of see, you know, anywhere else. And, and maybe you're not as an introvert, maybe you're not the first one to reach out, but you know, you reached out to me and you're like, Hey, Ailish, this is cool. Like, tell me about this. Right. Um, so I think, I think that's really cool. Um, and yeah, I mean, I, I think that with, with virtual networking, um, you can definitely be prepared, um, to kind of share your story and to, um, talk about yourself. When I talk about myself or introduce myself, I like to talk about that I, um, my mission is focused on cultivating confidence and inspiring self-discovery. So you can kind of be prepared to do that because, you know, hopefully there's kind of um, some expectations or, or um, some guidelines to these events, which I often find there are. That's fantastic. Okay, cool. This is great. I had a great time, Ailish. I <laughs> loved it. I love this conversation. Yeah, um, no, absolutely. And I think, you know, um, we talked about show notes. There's definitely a lot of great resources about just introverts in general out there. So we will definitely include those in the, the show notes as well. Um, you know, the, there's so many great um, minds when it comes to this topic. I mentioned Susan Cain um, and the Quiet Revolution, but there's um, great resources out there. There's a community called introvertdeer.com. Um, so it's called a community for introverts and highly sensitive people. So I would definitely check that out. Um, and then the last thing I kind of wanted to mention too is, um, which is also in the show notes. Um, there's something called the introverts bill of rights. Have you ever heard of that? I have <laughs> never heard of that. I've never heard of that. Um, and so I'll just, I'll just read a couple of them, but basically this is just a list of, clarification and confirmation for introverts that it's okay to be who you are and um, to live your life as an introvert in an extroverted society if that's you. So for example, um, you know, you have the right to contemplate and seek depth. You have the right, right to remain silent. <laughs> um, you have the right to decline without judgment, things like that. So we'll share that in the notes as well. I think that's great. I think that's really cool. Thanks for sharing yeah. that. Cool. Yeah. So I'm going to have the show notes. Um, so Ailish, before we sign off, like, do you have like maybe a way for people to reach out to you? Um, like a Twitter or something like that? Yeah. So, um, you can reach out to me in multiple ways. I, 
I would say that definitely reach out to me on LinkedIn. Um, that's definitely a preferred platform. I would love to talk with you as an introvert career coach. Um, I love facilitating um, sessions and, and I'm going to be facilitating um, in the future online um, sessions for introverts as well. Um, so I would say connect to me um, through my LinkedIn. My LinkedIn um, is simply my first and last name. So it's E-I-L-I-S Wasserman. Um, again, we'll put that in the notes because um, Ailish is a little bit more challenging name to pronounce as well. <laughs> cool. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you, Ailish. Thank you so much yes. for your time. Talk soon. Thank you. Thank you. Take care.